wow, that was, uh, that was a barn burner and a uh, tale of two halves in some ways. Um, but uh, I think that the, the resiliency of, of, this, of this team and their, their, their ability to continue to fight through, I think that's what I'm most proud of. Last year, there's, there's not a chance that we would have been able to hold it together um, and come out the second half and still give the effort and, and, and give the, the performance that we, that we did. I'm not saying it was clean. I'm not saying it was perfect by any means. We've got a long way to go. We know that. Um, we're never satisfied. We're going to keep pushing. But uh, the resiliency for those guys to, to keep their heads up, to keep their chins up, being a hole, being a situation, not just a hole, but you know, the, the way that happened, too, with giving up such big plays on on whether it's penalties or broken plays, that it just seemed like everything. I give them a lot of credit. I mean, that they made plays, especially in the first half. I mean, I've never, since Baker Mellon, I want to compare him, but I mean, to, to see a quarterback that make as many plays as he did in the first half uh, and keep things alive, um, you know, you, you get frustrated. As a coach, you get frustrated. As a player, you surely get frustrated. Uh, and where we were you know, I think last year, we wouldn't have had a chance to continue to, to battle. Uh, keep our composure and, and give ourselves a chance to win. And uh, you're seeing a lot of growth and maturity happening right in front of our faces. Questions? Where does that, uh, between last year and where, like you said, you got down early and the game took it away from you, it was such a young group. Where does that resolve come from? It, it, it's a grind. I mean, it, it's, they, it's over the time that they, you start to build those relationships. Um, I'm not saying you just you come in and you're going to, hey, we were talking, we, last year we talked about fighting and fighting and fighting. And, um, but to build those relationships that you can kind of talk to those guys during a game. I mean, I, a great growth moment. We got to continue to grow. But Jarrell White had a, had a situation in the first half. We missed a pressure, maybe went the wrong gap, whatever it is. It's, it's not to be talked about, but, you know, can lose his mind a little bit and then have the ability to, to snap back and, and go back out there. And, Play the way he did, and, and make a huge play there at the end of the end of the year, or at the end of the game. There, uh, I think it's it's a combination of everything. I think it's a combination uh, of the trust and the respect that's built within the coaching staff and the players, but there's also some some leadership and some some guys um, that no matter what, that uh, you know, Mike Warren's of the world, the Cortez Broughtons that, that have have come a long way. Uh, that you can still look at those guys and 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 get some energy and things off of them and from them. Um, the accountability uh, from player to player is, is what I think is probably the biggest thing that we've developed so far. Are there any adjustments that you can talk about that you made in terms of time? I don't know that there's a ton of adjustments. Yeah, I mean, th there's some little things that uh, how do you adjust to say, hey, we've got to be a sure tackles on the, on the quarterback? I mean, there's some situations that, that, uh, that you know, some of the runs and some of those things, yeah, well, there's, there's little things defensively. Offensively, I think it's just about the rhythm. Um, it wasn't a surprise of something. It's, it's getting in with some of those situations where you can open it up a little bit. You know, you're, the momentum's going against you. You get you, you run the ball on first down, you end up minus one or, or zero, and, you know, you become a little bit more predictable. So I thought the first half, both defensively and offensively, in the tougher situations, being backed up in field position, um, we were much more predictable. Second half, we got a little bit of leeway opened some things up and gave us a chance to make some plays down the field. Dejan Ritter just looks like a guy that, back here, sorry, that refuses to lose. What can you say about him and just what he's done for this team? Well, I think that you, we're developing some of those guys. Or I shouldn't say we're developing. We're, we're seeing that. Yes, we're trying to develop it. There's some natural God-given things inside there, and a lot of those guys, whether it's Desmond, whether it's Mike Warren, um, Brian Wright, Cortez Broughton, or Kisco, that, that are starting to shine and be seen. And I think that those things – what you talk about, how do you handle it, and how do you continue to move past it that you couldn't do last year, it's, it's leadership. It's those guys that, that have the will and the fight, um, even when things are really tough, you know, to not let it affect them. You know, the demeanors, the body language, because it's, it's very contagious in everything we do. I don't know that there was one thing that turned the tide. I, I know this, that, that when you come out at halftime and your offense is going to get the ball and you, know, you, you really need a, a big momentum jump uh, to have our longest play of the year to hit, a, hit an inside route or a fade route uh, to Rashad Medeiros for 70-some yards that, that just, you know, if there are guys that are hanging on that edge, you know, can we do this? Do we believe that all of a sudden, you know, between the crowd and the, the guys around them, really start to, to pick it up a bit? What's that? What you, know, well, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but you can just see that there's a little bit of shock there. You know, I mean, it's, 
you know, we were, you know, in, in the first three games, really good situations. I know UCLA was a tight one. Uh, it was 7 nothing at half in the Miami game, but you really felt like you were in control. Here at halftime, uh, you didn't, there was no control, you know, in a sense that, hey, well, we just, just dropped a ball or we, you know, this, that, or the other thing. I mean, there was play after play defensively that, you know, they're just big plays, whether they're broken plays and, you know, hey, can, can we really get this guy under control? Can we, can we shut this quarterback down? Um, you know, but, but you didn't see a panic. I'm not saying they were in here jumping around and ready to roll, but you saw a little bit of a calmness. You know, and I'm talking that from the, from the coaching staff as well, that uh, start to build that trust and belief in the people around them. They were inches away from a winning touchdown here, second and goal. What about your defense responding there in that situation? Well, I wouldn't call it a winning touchdown because we would still have had an opportunity and I would have put a lot of faith in Desmond Ritter. Now, I wish we'd had three timeouts, but we had to use them a little bit. Um, no, it, it's, I mean, goal line stands nowadays, you don't see a bunch of them. And to have that opportunity uh, to be aggressive, I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that are starting that situation right there. They're on the six-inch line. Do you let them score? Save our time. Do you let them score? Uh, you know, give our chance, get the, get the ball back to the offense. And, and, you know, that's just not how you're built. You know, I know that you can look at some analytics things, and they can tell you this might be an opportunity to let it go. But uh, the reality is you just want to keep fighting. And, uh, the game is about making plays, and Jarrell White stepped up and made a huge play. And the next, the next snap, uh, James Wiggins stepped up and made an even a bigger play. I know you don't want your assistants to take a 15-yard penalty, but was there a benefit for your team when that happened? Did they kind of get the sense that, hey, our coaches are frustrated too? Was there? A, a Did you know who, who was that on? I, I, no, okay. I thought you were pointing at me. No, no, no. No, no I, I don't know that we ever want to. You know, I don't know that we ever want that. But yeah, it was. There was definitely a little bit of a. a you know, where we got your back. And, and uh, I don't know if it's, it's like major league, like baseball or anything where you get thrown out for a reason, but uh, I would rather not have the penalty in the 15 yards. <laughs> it, it doesn't quite affect as much in baseball. But you know what? That's what that maturity you're starting to see, that trust and respect and love that we talk about that's not just in that locker room, but amongst the entire program with the coaching staff as well. Um, kind of like at the end there when Mike Warren kind of gave me one, hey, coach, we'll be fine. Give me the ball. What's that? The assistant coach. I don't even know who it was on. Yeah, an assistant coach. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the head coach. It's always on the head coach. Without Perry Young, did it seem like maybe some of his energy wasn't there early? I mean, you got to be able to play through that. To... you got to play through that. I mean, I think the toughest thing is, you know, when you got to just shift your guys around a little bit. And, you know, Jarrell and, and Ty Sponseller filled in. Jarrell jumped into a spot where he hadn't played a whole lot of ball. Um, you know, and, you know, some of those things, you go through practice all week and you feel good about what you do and in the heat of the moment, there's going to be mistakes. And, you know, that's what you kind of, you know, you can't sit you say you rely upon Perry's energy and things like that. But uh, we know he's a good player for us. We, we're going to need every single one of these guys. And at some point in time, there's going to be two or three other guys inside that locker room. They're going to have to step up and fill in for somebody. Coach, what's it mean for this uh, team, this program, 4-0, going into conference play, start conference play? It means we're 4-0 and we still have an opportunity to uh, play for championships, and that's that's been the goal since I got here. That'll continue to be the goal. Uh, conference play starts now, um, so all the marbles are on the table. And I don't I don't want us to put anything ahead of it. Yes, you know it's about momentum, it's about energy, um, but it's about now really starting to to do what it is that we what we want to do, and, and the goal and the dreams we had when we when we started this. What was the explanation you got on the, the punt penalty and review? Was that an official review? That was a new one on me. Um, so it's a, it's a review of, of the ball not being tipped. Um, didn't know that they could review that. I guess that's on me. Um, still would have believed that the ball on the ground, he becomes a live, a live guy. He's not protected like a punter. But um, I guess something we got to learn from. Something will be a, a Sunday example uh, that we try to grab throughout the entire country. We try to look at those different plays that happen throughout the country so our guys can learn. Um, learn from those examples so we don't make the same ones. So it'll be an example right there for us to, to learn from for our team that happened to us. You raved about Ritter's confidence last week. Where was his confidence at the half? You know what? He wasn't. That, that's what I mean. He, he never batted an eye. He's one of those kids that, um, that came in here and, you know, was energetic. He's one of the guys that is more vocal. Um, you know, there's some guys that are kind of just calm and cool and collective, and, and he's much more of an energetic guy, and you never, he never batted an eye. I mean, offensively, they just didn't have a whole lot of opportunities in the first half. I know things didn't go well, but, you know, the last two drives, all of a sudden you started to get a feel for, hey, okay, you know, we've got a handle on some things here, and we're going to have an opportunity when we come out to get the ball.